So I returned to Blackie and Kitty and introduced the Gorak to them. They weren't impressed. On the way there, I'd found some mushrooms, which was great, because now I had booze and shrooms. Not a combination I'd recommend to everyone, but I knew what I was doing. Sort of. Alright, I didn't. I just wanted to get hammered, okay? The next day, I had a plan. It involved Patat. So I woke him and said he could help. His reaction was a bit unexpected. This is Nidak, my adventure, written down in a better way than I can tell it. Episode 23 The Ritual of Drowning Dragon, meet the dragonfly. Nidak swept her arms in a grand gesture from Blackie to Patat. On their way back to Kitty and Blackie, Nedek had taken a few more good swallows from the bottle of rum. She'd found mushrooms too, thanks to the light-giving insects who decided to follow the Gorak. It claimed to be unable to order them around, so only three had followed out of their own free will. She'd nibbled on the mushrooms while walking. She giggled at the empty expression on both of the creatures' faces. Patat was the first to say something. What's a grounding dragonfly? It flew up higher to look down and back, through its long legs, the bottle of rum hanging from one of its tails, as if looking for something. The four wings were the only graceful body part it had. Nida laughed at her own little joke and shook her head. Never mind. She sat down, giving Kitty something else to headbutt instead of her ankles. Blackie, this is Patat. Patat, this is Kitty and that's obviously Blackie. She chuckled again. Tonight's missive was working. She told the air in between them that she was unavailable from now on until the morning, reached out and took the bottle from the Goa while mumbling, Payment for freeing you. Blackie didn't leave her alone that easily, of course. She asked in her mind what was going on. Nidak did her best to explain this was a ritual she needed to do, and Blackie shouldn't worry no matter what happened tonight. Tomorrow she would start fixing things and finding solutions. Tonight she would be a mess. The dragon obviously didn't understand, but agreed to let her be. Nidak ate more mushroom and took another spill from the rum. She didn't bother using the cup anymore. Blackie looked sideways towards Patat, who had stopped flying and curled up to sleep. The dragon didn't trust the Gorbak. That was enough for Nidak to keep a sliver of mistrust for the newly found creature. For now, though, she wouldn't think too hard on what was true and untrue. Her head felt blessedly floaty, and the emotions she'd been meaning to drown were all there, pushed to the extreme by the drunken high she was in. Tears spilled in an endless cascade, pooling on the ground to make a tiny river in between the grass. The Gorak had already passed out, breathing in slow and deep breaths. That was quick. Nedek unlatched the halberd and its harness and leaned back onto Blackie's belly, cherishing the warmth. She tilted her head, looked up at the night sky, marveling at the beauty. It looked similar to Earth's, but she was certain none of the constellations were the same. She'd never been able to remember any but the most known ones, and neither of them were here. Did that mean they were in a different universe altogether? Or did they merely see a different part of it, deforming the patterns of the stars? Whatever it was, it looked magical. Without any light pollution, there were clusters of tightly clumped stars, as if seen several Milky Ways on Earth. 
she let her mind wander and lost herself, sucked into the infinity of space and beyond. The faint light of sunrise woke her. The expected hangover wasn't there. That proved the exceptional quality of the rum. She yawned and laughed simultaneously as she crawled out of the middle of the curled-up dragon. She'd been included in the dragon donut. As she stood outside of it, looking at Kitty settling himself on his usual place on top of one of the wings, she noticed Blackie opening one eye. I'm all good, she whispered to Blackie. There's an idea forming, just need to think it over some more. She glanced at the Gorwak. It was still sleeping, prone on its back, all limbs spread out, the tails like a fan to the side. Drool dribbled from its open mouth. It had small, square teeth on the upper jaw and large yellow ones at the bottom. She couldn't see the rest of its dentures, but from what she saw of the front, she suspected this strange creature ate mostly plants, like grass and leaves. That would explain why it could have survived as a prisoner in one area, especially if that area is a giant tree with an endless supply of leaves, and perhaps the occasional fruit. One mystery solved, a million more to go. Her stomach growled. Hot food would be wonderful. She didn't mind living off fruit and other raw edibles, but eventually she always craved something more. Coffee would be amazing, although she'd settle for tea as well. She knew she could find herbs suitable to make tea with, but they had no hot water, so that was pointless. They didn't even have water. It didn't matter. They'd have food and drink soon. About an hour later, she frowned at the Gorwak while nudging it with her foot. But that awoke with a start. I swear it's a burning truth. Please don't open my grounding guts. It sat up, liquid black eyes wide, staring at Nadek. Then it relaxed. What was that all about? Nida hoped to someday get the whole story to confirm her suspicions. She felt a bit guilty for interrupting it yesterday, but there were more urgent things to take care of first. Wake up, sunshine! Or should I say rainbow? Those small spots of rainbow on the glistening slimy skin looked decidedly odd. She realized the rainbows appeared on the places where it, if this was, say, the fish would reflect the light the most. Such a strange little creature. Are you still staying with us and coming along? She asked the question in a casual way, but relied on a positive reply for the rest of her plan to work. Of course, I burning am. I've been by my dripping self for long enough. His eyes narrowed. You have a dripping plan, don't you? Oh. All the grounding knew it. When did you bloody come up with that? Nedak only nodded, unable to resist the tugging on the corners of her mouth. Blackie was looking at her curiously. The intensity of her look was spoiled by her stretches. In perfect synchronicity with Kitty. Good. You will show us the way to my employers. One of her eyebrows lifted. Close your dripping mouth, you look like a burning fish. She was relieved when that made it laugh, a short but loud harumph. Meeting new people or sentient beings she could communicate with was always tedious in the beginning. Figuring out if they could get along with her humor. She had high hopes for this one but didn't forget the mistrusting look Blackie had given Patat. Burning good one, Nadek, burning good one. But how do you expect me to ground and help you? It leaned down, broke some grass off with a combination tongue and teeth, and began chewing.
satisfaction of being right at its eating habits strengthened her confidence in her other theories. I figured it out. Not completely, but enough. You knew who I was yesterday. At least, you knew my bloodline. One of my ancestors had caged you, either to keep you safe and preserve your species, or to keep everyone else safe. I suspect the first option. Because she'd been keeping a close eye on the creature, she saw the effect her words had. It tried to hide it by maintaining its steady chewing, but she'd seen. Gamble number one had been true. Now, on to gamble number two. She sank through her knees in front of the tut. You, her voice was full of silent intent, can tell me how to get to my employers. The Gorak snorted and jumped up to fly. That wasn't the reaction Nedek had expected, but it wasn't a denial either. Nedek stood up, but when she was at eye level with Patat, it flew up even higher. Did it do that for presumed dominance? That amused her, but she didn't show. That's bloody ridiculous! I don't grounding know what you're talking about. Oh, but you do. She focused on keeping her voice confident. We are all connected. You and me, and you and them. So, like I said, she crossed her arms, her face smug. You can get us to my employers. You have been listening to Nadek, Chapter 23, The Ritual of Drowning. Narrated, adventured by and lived through by myself, Nadek. Written in a better way than I can tell it by Astrid Jeff. Don't go just yet. We've got bloopers coming up. Find us on Twitter at Astrid Jeff and at Nadek and Kitty. If you like this show and would like to support it, a good way to do that is share it around to everyone you know. An even better way is to rate and review it on iTunes or whichever podcatcher you use. Don't forget to follow the show or subscribe. Do that again. I don't like the way that sounds, but no. She giggled at the empty experiment. Nirak laughed at her own. Oh shit, what am I doing? Bloody hell. What happened here? I don't know what happened. Nirak laughed at her own joke. Nedak laughed at her own little joke. What the fuck? Nedak laughed at her... Oh, the fuck am I doing? No. I'll just let this sentence... Oop! Damn it, I did it again. As if she in severance. As she stood outside of it, looking at Kittle... Kittle? <laughs> Kitty, you mean. <laughs> Kittle. Hello, Kittle. <laughs> Anyways, she glanced at a. She glanced at a Gorwak. She glanced at the Gor. Why is this so difficult? Of course, I'm burning. I'm. Of course, I'm burning. Of course, I'm burning. I'm. Oh, I've been by my dripping self for long enough. That's the wrong voice, isn't it? Of course. <clears throat> Of course I'm burning him. Of course I'm burning him. Of course. What was his voice again? Oh, shit. But didn't forget the mistruck. But did... She heard hi. <laughs> you. Her voice was full. <clears throat> well, my voice is about to give up. Chapter 23. <laughs>